Hi, this is Trey Pastor, and I'm going to do a, a couple of reactions to Mr. Nightmare Stories. I love Mr. Nightmare, and I haven't done one in a while. Uh, okay, so this first one is going to be three ch scary, two crazy best friend horror stories. Uh, okay, so let's see what this one's all about. I'll be right back with my reaction. Can you put my headphones on? Okay. Here we go, right? Now, go. Best friend horror stories. Story one. Boom, boom. This is a very delicate personal story of mine. Okay. So I'm going to change names and small details around so nobody may recognize it to be me. Okay. I'd been good friends with a girl named Jess for almost six years. Okay. Since high school, basically. We even went to college together and dorm together. When we were in our junior year of college, we moved out of the dorms and into an off-campus apartment. Okay. It was a three-bedroom apartment, and our third roommate was our friend Stacy. We were less close with Stacy, but we had no problems with her. Okay. In fact, the three of us would go out together on the weekends. I just had more of that best friend tell everything vibe with Jess, if you know what I mean. Okay. It was the spring semester. Spring break was approaching, and we were planning the days we'd be going home. Stacy and I were planning on leaving the same day. Jess was going to be staying an extra day because she said she needed to work one final shift at her job. Okay. So the day came that Stacy and I left. I said bye to Jess, even though I would mm. probably be seeing her the next day at home. Okay. I left and hit the road. But you ever forget something, and when you remember it, it hits you like a brick? That was what happened to me while on the freeway. Okay. I pulled to the side of the road in a hurry and checked my bags for my laptop. Okay. I checked my backpack, too. I realized I had forgotten it. I had driven half an hour already, and now I had to go back just to get my laptop. Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I had to. I couldn't go almost two weeks without my computer. Okay. So my half hour drive back to the apartment began. When I got back, I let myself in and called for Jess, ready okay. to tell her what an idiot I was. Okay. She didn't call back, so she didn't appear to be in the apartment. Okay. Her door was wide open, though. She usually kept it shut, especially when she wasn't home. I checked my room for my laptop up and down, but I couldn't find it. Okay. Curiously, I walked to Jess's doorway and looked into her room, and there it was. Uh oh. Her laptop was open on her bed next Jeez. to her laptop. Uh oh. Why didn't she call or text me? I went to pick it up and saw my laptop was signed in. She somehow got into my account. Jeez. And then she knew my password. I switched to looking at her laptop. Okay. It got worse from here. There was a folder open containing a bunch of pictures. Oh. Pictures of me. Uh oh. Some of the most disturbing pictures I found were pictures of me passed out on the couch after drunk nights out. Jesus. And pictures of me in a towel, either in my room or in the bathroom. Uh oh. My heart was racing. I shut my laptop and started searching her room, her closet specifically. Okay. And I found a number of my belongings, mostly articles of clothing. Some I won't mention because it's disturbing and embarrassing. Okay. I grabbed all my stuff I could find and stormed out. I locked my bedroom door and left the apartment. Okay. I didn't call Jess. I called my parents as soon as I got back in my car. Okay. They didn't have any words. They couldn't even give me advice because this was so messed up. Exactly. By the time I got home, I saw Jess blocked me on everything. Instagram, Snap. I assumed she blocked my number too. But Jeez. I never tried contacting her again. Jesus. By the time I got back to the apartment a week and a half later, yeah. all of her stuff was out of the apartment. I didn't see her again for almost a whole year. Oh, until she man. was out with our mutual friends and we ran into each other. Oh. She wouldn't even look at me. Oh. She couldn't even gather the courage to confront me about it. Oh. The person that I thought was my best friend for six years was a sick, twisted stalker storing mm. lewd pictures of me and stealing my belongings. Mm. This brought to light an incident that happened our first month in the apartment. Okay. I was drunk after a night of drinking and I woke up shortly after falling asleep to a sound in my closet. I remembered sitting up, rubbing my eyes, and looking around the room, yeah. thinking I saw and heard someone in the closet. Jeez. I was so scared that I ran to Stacy's room screaming because oh. her room was closer. Yeah. By the time she went to check the room with me, the closet was empty, and Jess allegedly never woke up to come check the commotion. Uh-oh. It made sense to me now that she was in my closet that night. I yeah. got sick to my stomach, thinking about all the things that she may have done that I will never know about. Yeah, that's true. Good point. Story two. My old best friend Jason had a number of disorders. Well, I guess if you'd call them that. 
He okay. had insomnia. He frequently Jeez. had night terrors, and he battles depression. I'm sure okay. he's got other personal issues that he doesn't really share. Mm. All I know is he takes a lot of medication. One day, he and his roommate were having serious issues, worse than usual. Jason called me all distressed, yeah. saying they just got into a screaming match uh -oh. with one another, and it almost got physical, okay. and that he needed a place to crash for a couple nights. I told him not a problem. Okay. I'd sleep on the couch in my apartment for a few nights. When he arrived, I tried pressing him for more details on the fight, like why it happened, but he didn't tell me anything. I respected that, though. If he didn't want to share personal details like that, I wasn't going to press him further for it. He dropped his backpack full of clothes in the corner of the living room, and he kind of just watched TV and played Call huh. of Duty on my Xbox for most of the day and night. I hung out with him for a bit, but I had my own things to take care of. When I got home, Jason was passed out on the couch under a blanket. Okay. I passed him quietly and got ready for bed. I woke up randomly, feeling extremely thirsty, okay. and the water bottle I kept next to my bed was empty. So I quietly went through the living room towards the kitchen. As I passed by the couch, uh -oh. I couldn't help but notice Jason wasn't on it. His bag was still in the corner of the room, though, so it's not like he left. Okay. Maybe he ran to the bathroom. Either way, I didn't look around for him. I went back to my room and kept the door open a crack. It was a long time that I didn't hear Jason leaving the bathroom, though. Okay. Simply laying back down on the couch, for that matter. So I was going to get back up and look around for him just because I was concerned. But as I got up, I started hearing these ticking or clicking sounds. Kind of like a rodent. I looked around the dark room, and only then oh. did I notice Jason standing in the corner of my room, arms flat at his side. Jeez. I let out a scream and Jesus. jumped, startled as putting how I felt mildly. Yes, even in this dark room, I was able to realize it was Jason. I threw my Sad. pillow at him and yelled, What the actual hell are you doing? He flinched, and he stopped making the ticking noises, then walked out of my room in this stiff, creepy manner. I heard him basically collapse onto the couch. Yeah. I stepped out into the living room to try to talk to him. He didn't answer. I realized he must have been sleepwalking. Yeah. The next morning I asked him about uh. it, and he said he didn't remember any of it. I asked him so. if he tends to sleepwalk. Uh. He said no, or at least not that he was aware of. But other than that, the day was pretty normal. We chatted and hung out in the living room for a while. Jesus. Then I had to go out and run some errands. He'd be staying one more night at my place. Mm-mm. Uh -uh. Once again woke up randomly in the middle of the night. This time okay. I wasn't thirsty, so I don't know what woke me up. But for curiosity's sake, I got up to check if Jason oh. was on the couch. Jesus. He wasn't. Not again. I called Jason's name pretty loud. He wasn't in the bathroom or the kitchen, nor did he seem to be in my room. I climbed back into bed and tried texting his phone, okay. but nothing delivered, so it seemed to be off. I called his name one more time really loud. And then I heard this disturbing, muffled speaking sound. Ugh. I looked at the closet where it was coming from, and I saw through the Ugh. six inch opening, Jason's face in the dark, Jesus. peeking through the door, his hands over his mouth. I yelled at him full volume to get him out of my closet. He didn't listen. He had to be sleepwalking again. I went to the closet to open it fully, okay. grabbed his arm, and pulled it to get him out of the closet. But as Ugh. I did that, I saw the big carving knife in his hand. I looked at his half lifeless looking face Jesus. and ran to the bathroom and locked myself yes. in. I considered calling the police, but I didn't. I waited until I heard him go back to the couch. Then I ran to my room and locked the door. I didn't understand how sleepwalking could escalate to a level that he'd be picking up weapons. Down. It didn't seem right. Laying in my bed at three in the morning, I DM'd his roommate telling him what just happened yeah. and asking him what happened between the two of them. He didn't reply until the next morning. I woke up to three long DMs from his roommate. Basically, in short, he told me Ugh. Jason is a sicko freak who needs help. And he said Jason came Jesus. into his room with a knife the last night he was there and was standing at the foot Ugh. of his bed before he tackled him to the floor. Mm. He said Jason claimed <laughs> he was sleepwalking, but his roommate didn't believe it. This made the whole thing even scarier Ugh. because Jason told me that he doesn't sleepwalk, or not that he's aware of. I asked yeah. Jason to leave that day because of what was going on. He did so. <sighs> I think he went back to his mom's house. Jason and I still follow each other on social media, yeah. but I kind of faded things out from him after that. I still don't know what to make of him or the fact that he brought a knife exactly. into more than one person's room Story in the three. middle of the night. Okay. Okay. This is a deeply personal and disturbing story. 
I'm not sure why I'm choosing to share it with the internet, but here goes. Okay. I don't have too many friends. Up until a few days ago, I looked at this guy Milo as my best friend for a while. <laughs> met him in one of my college classes. Huh. We got along mostly because we always cheated on tests together and helped each other to find the answers for our homework assignments. Eventually, we started hanging okay. out outside of class, and I would sooner or later start telling him a lot of personal stuff that I didn't tell many other people. Just because I felt most comfortable with him okay. didn't mean I saw him as a super high-quality, genuine guy. He was just someone I thought was somewhat there for me. There was this one night I didn't have plans, so I hit him up okay. and he suggested we hit one of the bars in town. I drove the two of us there since I wasn't huh. planning on getting too drunk. This night, though, he, for huh. whatever reason, decided to get blackout wasted, ordering shot okay. after shot, mixed drink after mixed drink. I had a couple drinks that cut myself off so I could drive. Oh. Milo was so drunk that he was approaching random girls and saying some pretty foolish things that were huh. causing me to cringe. At one point, I had to apologize okay. to these two girls for him and tried to make light of it, but really the night just wasn't going the way I wanted it to which was to have a chill, laid-back night out with my friend. Okay. He made it stressful, so I pulled him out of the bar and sat him in my car to drive us back to his apartment. I'd never actually been inside of his apartment before. This was the first time. I walked him inside and laid him down on his couch, where he instantly okay. seemed to just crash and pass out. He dropped his phone out of his hand and onto the floor, but didn't flinch. So, yeah, he was out. His phone was on and unlocked, though. Honestly, I always okay. wondered what the hell Milo even did for work, considering he always seemed to be down to spend money, but never talked about work. Okay. In a perfect world, I shouldn't have done this, but I picked up his phone and started going through his camera <laughs> roll. I don't know what I was expecting to find, honestly. I was really <laughs> just being a sneaky snoop. But I was doing it because I often thought Milo was a little sketchy and was hiding some things. His camera roll is full of junk, like screenshots of websites, texts, and a bunch of selfies. Okay. So I went to the album section and found this suspicious okay. album titled Girls. I opened it expecting to find nudes or porn pictures or whatever. Oh. Well, it was much worse. What I found in there were pictures of young women tied up to a bed. and a lot of the pictures, the women were visibly distressed and crying. I won't get into any graphic detail, but the pictures were disturbing. I thought maybe they were from the internet at first, but I took note of the blue bed cover. Uh. I went to Milo's room and flicked on the light. <laughs> when I saw the blue bed cover, I shook my head in disgust, and I guess because I actually had no idea how to feel. I sent a couple of the pictures to uh. myself, then deleted the texts off his phone. I put uh. the phone back on the floor next to uh. him and left. The next day he texted me, I know you went in my room, so you <laughs> need to talk now. He followed that up with, if you saw any pictures, <laughs> they were just role-playing pictures. Yeah. I ignored him. I didn't know how he knew I saw the pictures, though. And I don't know how oh. he knew I was in his room. <laughs> that next night, he came to my door and rang the bell like 30 times. Jesus. I ignored it. And hours later, when I was trying to sleep, rocks were thrown at my window. Oh. And I heard Milo outside calling up to me. Moments later, I heard him trying to open <laughs> one of my windows. Exactly. That's when I picked up my phone and called him and yelled at him to simply leave me alone or I would be calling the cops. Then I hung up. He didn't text me or call me again. I still have those two pictures on my phone, and I'm really wondering what I should do and how I should proceed with it. If he really knows I saw those pictures, I don't know if he's going to target me if he gets the chance, or if Call he's going to move out or what, but at this very moment, I'm a little scared for my well-being. Okay. Oof. Call the cops. <laughs> Call the cops. Okay, <laughs> now, those stories, the first story, oh, oh, that was freaky, that the girl was actually stalking, st you know, stalking her, fr her roommate, who, I guess maybe she was obsessed with her or something, that could be really freaky, you don't know who you're moving in with, so, yeah, that's freaky, especially that you left your laptop and she was going through your laptop, Jesus Christ. And had pictures of you, uh, uh, and, and it was hiding in your closet. She's basically, you basically moved in your stalker, okay? And you didn't know that that could happen to anybody. So you don't, you know, you just got to be careful and be aware that, especially if somebody you just met, you never know what their background is and stuff. So you got to be careful uh, about that. Now, that you know that that second story come on obviously the guy is sleepwalking or something because come on 
with a knife in people's beds. I come on. Maybe, like I said, maybe he doesn't know he's sleepwalking, but somebody should get him help because obviously, you know, he could have technically he could have killed his roommate or killed you. So you know, you tell him go get help. Or you just you know, we can't be friends because obviously you're st sleepwalking or something, and that could be you know dangerous. Or s suppose you didn't know when you saw your friend in your room and you thought he was a stranger and you beat you know you, you beat the beat him within an inch of his life or something. So obviously he probably you know you say he takes all these medications so maybe there's something you know that causes him to sleepwalk so he should definitely get help tell him to go, you know reach out tell him to go get help to see a doctor because obviously he's sleepwalking maybe the medication is making him sleepwalk and the fact that he has knives <laughs> okay shows that he's potentially be violent so okay he definitely making sure he gets help I said listen we can't be friends I, I can't hang out with you if I know you're gonna sleepwalk and try potentially try to kill me. <laughs> Okay, so that's you know that's crazy. And the th and the third one, you know, you know that could be, you know, like I said, maybe you should, like I said, call the cops and just say let the cops investigate that to make sure. Like I said, it could be role playing, could be maybe, but you, it's better safe than sorry. Because I suppose those girls, those are girls that he, you know, he attacked or something. So and and he just you know he likes souvenirs to remind himself. You know, so you never know what that could be. So definitely, I would reach out to the cops and say, "Listen, I don't know if this is uh, something. Maybe you can investigate, look at the pictures, and see if these girls, and see if you can identify the girls, and see make just to make sure." Because he said it was role playing, but I'm not sure, and I don't want to. You know, it freaked me out, and and I didn't want nothing to do with him in case he's in case that isn't the case, and he, and they actually attacked these two women, okay, and, or. In the photo, so I want to make sure, just to be sure, okay. And if it's, you know, if it was role playing, then maybe you can apologize. But it's better safe than sorry, because you never know. This guy could be a t potential, you know, stalker killer. You know, you know. So it's, it's better. It's always better safe than sorry, okay. Okay, you just cut him off, told Turkey, which is kind of, you know, obviously you let the guy know, and obviously he probably saw that you sent a text from his phone. Okay, I know you can delete the text, but I think he can see. I think there's a way to find out. Even if somebody deletes the text, you can find out uh, what numbers they went to. So he probably saw on his phone that that there was, you know, calls going out to to your number. So he know you actually looked in the pictures. And so say, I'm sure there's software that does that to let him know that somebody used his phone. Okay, so that's why he knew, and that's why he was trying to talk to you, or maybe trying to, you know, dissuade you from contacting the authorities and, and stuff. And, and he really was persistent. So that why it makes me think that maybe that ain't role playing. Maybe that's girls that he attacked. Okay, so like I said, I advise you, I just I contact the detectives, go to the precinct, say, listen, I just want to be safe, rather safe than sorry. He said it's role playing, but I don't know, these looks, pictures look kind of real. Maybe you can find these girls and make sure that this ain't one of these guys attack, this guy, you know, attacking girls or something. I want to be safe, rather safe than sorry. Okay, and that's my opinion about that. Okay, uh, that first story is disturbing. But I think the second story is the is the worst one out of all of them. Because the first one is just a stalker, stalker chick. I mean, she's just basically stalking you. And you would have never known unless, I guess, I don't not to say that's not right, right just, you know, because she stalked you, basically moved in, and she was obsessed with you. Okay, so, you know. Obviously, that's not right. And but the second story, come on, that guy, that guy could have potentially murdered you, okay, or his roommate and you. And then the third story, like I said, it could be that guy's uh, like a, uh, you know, a stalker or or potential killer. You know, he likes pain, he likes to, he has, you know, sadomasochist. He likes to torture girls or something. Okay, so that's why I think the second story is the worst, because you could have potentially died. Then the, then the third story, then the first story. If I rank them in order. Okay, anyway, let me know what you think of these Mr. Nightmare Stories, three uh, best friend horror stories. Uh, I'll leave a link to Mr. T uh, Nightmare Story uh, channel in the description box so you can check them out for yourself. Also, have links to my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram. Also, have a link to my other channel, Paul Views and Opinions. Check that out as well. Also, have a link to my Patreon channel. Please check that out as well. And this is Trey Pass saying so long and take care.